Greetings gamer guys and gals, welcome to part number 39 of my Let's Play Fire Emblem 5 Thracia 776 and in today's episode we're going to hopefully be finishing off Connemore's group here and dealing with him as soon as possible. I'm not entirely sure that it's going to work out exactly as planned however because I do believe that Connemore's group retreats after next turn. And if that's the case, we just don't have enough manpower over here to possibly get um, everything we want done. So, we can try. We certainly can try. But I just don't think it's happening. We would have to KO five of these units here. And we just don't have the capacity to do that, unfortunately. We could hope for real silly things to happen, like, um, Vigor Stars, but it's, again, it's not something that you can really bet on. Yeah, it's not happening now, that's for sure. Only thing we could hope for now is that Parn um, gets a Vigor Star after attacking and KOing this unit here. Alright, so we're going to have to use the Paragon Sword. And he did. Awesome. So with that being said, we're going to be able to steal the Nihil Manual. Uh, ooh. So we have to get rid of something here. Um, well, what we could do is throw him a pure water because we're not going to need it. Not a big fan of getting rid of items like that, but it was either that or we did not get the Nihil Manual because I do believe it is next turn he is going to be retreating with the rest of his crowd. And I was right. We may... Ah, uh, no, we're not going to be able to. I was going to say we could potentially go ahead and attack Connemore. Um... But that's not looking likely. All right. Take the knee hill manual. Don't need it on Karen, but we might as well take it anyhow. This is a bit of a stretch, but if we were to get another movement star, we would be able to steal... Um, we could have been able to steal, like, hit the Killing Edge or whatever, but I was not expecting it. And that is it for this chapter. Well done, Prince Leaf. You've weathered another difficult situation with finesse and wisdom. Our motherland of Leonster is but a stone's throw away. The people have been awaiting your return for many years now. Leonster, my kingdom. Indeed, your sovereign land. Ah, but I get ahead of myself. You were so young when we had to flee, Leonster. It would be understandable if you do not remember her beauty. No, I remember Leonster's beauty. But most of all, I remember that night. As long as I live, I'll never forget it. That night? What do you remember, my lord? The night that Castle Leonster fell. The flames burned so brightly. I thought it was already sunrise. I remember just looking up at the sky from Finn's arms. At first, I didn't understand what was happening. But when I saw the look on Finn's face, I knew something terrible had happened. And I was filled with this deep sorrow. It was the first time in my life I'd felt such a profound sadness. 
I forced Finn into a tough role, I admit, but he was the only man for the job, the only man I could trust with your life. As long as the prince is safe, the day will come when Leonster rises again. That's what I told him. And off he rolled, clutching you to his chest, away from the flames consuming the castle. That was the last time I ever saw Finn cry. Ever since then, he hasn't shed a tear for anything. No, not just cry, it's like he forgot how to laugh, too. He left part of himself behind in Leonster, and he's not alone. We all left a piece of our souls behind when we fled the Motherland. Having breached Fort Nordheim, the Liberation Army finally stood before the gates of Leonster. Yet their fight was far from over. A battalion of Imperial troops, even larger in number than the one at Fort Nordheim, awaited them. This is quite the intriguing chapter, to say the absolute least. Um, we have a large amount of enemies to deal with, and it's going to be kind of difficult. Uh, especially because several of our units are just not really... Um, not really up to snuff with some of the uh, enemies in this chapter, but... Luckily for us, we have means that we're going to be uh, taking care of these enemies. Uh, for instance, this darn dark bishop here, we're going to be taking care of him as well through means of the silent staff, which is going to be really funny, in my opinion. Um, we do have to use some pretty nefarious means in order to get a hold of Misha here. She is a specific unit that we need to be able to um, recruit by capturing. So the only way that we're going to be able to do that particularly well is if we bring somebody up with a sleep edge. And the only unit I can think of that is capable of doing this and well, especially without a warp use being burnt, though we aren't getting a free warp this chapter, we could necessarily use Marita to do this, because I think she would probably be um, the best case for this, technically. Um, there, there's other means that we can go about making sure we capture this unit, um, but... It's funny that she has a windsword. She can't even use it right now because she's not dismounted. Um, it's kind of one of the silly things about Pegasus Knights. Is you'd think that they would be able to use stuff like uh, swords while they're mounted. Especially upon promotion. Um, we do have several things we have to do in this chapter including visit several villages. We have a lot of enemies to take care of. A lot to deal with. Not too many reinforcements which is great. But we are seeing Nikolov. Uh, come back and he has a master axe and a killer axe. This is one of those instances where you're capable of getting a killer axe if you so wished um, With five authority stars. He's going to be kind of a little bit of a nuisance Plus we're going to be seeing a unit here that is going to make our battle that much more difficult So with that being said, I think now is the time that I'm going to go ahead and deal with deploying as well as getting everything all together for my units and so on and so forth, items-wise and whatnot. I will see you all in a few. All right, so here are my units. Yes, we are giving Leaf the Soul Manual, uh, Master Seal for Salem. Um, we're going to be putting the sleep on Shrove, even though it's broken, because I'm going to be hemerning it. I've decided that because we're going to have a few more warps than I normally get, sometimes I don't recruit Shrove, sometimes I don't bother stealing some, and I am also visiting a specific Gaiden that will have a bunch. I'm not going to be using a second um, hemern on any warp staves. I don't think it's going to be necessary. So... We're going to be giving Shroff here a uh, sleep staff to repair, and then we're going to be using that sleep in this chapter. Um, I do have other units who are fully ready to um, 
take on all of the evils of this next mission. Fergus is getting the Nihil, Nihil manual, um, just in case. I've separated many of the scrolls as is needed. Karen and your flyers are definitely welcome here, especially due to the fact that they're going to have to deal with several of the units up north. Um, unfortunately, Dean with the Master Lance is going to be the only one who is going to have the capacity to take on the Jormungandr mages really well. Um, which is kind of a bit of a shame. We're going to be taking a pure water with him as well. Um, Edda can help, and Karen can help a bit as well. They're all going to have to uh, pitch in, uh, for better or for worse. And that's pretty well it. So our units are positioned in such a way that I think it is perfectly well that we can pr start the chapter. 17, in fact, the Gates of Leonster. I see you've got to deal with the rebels, Nikolov. Explain yourself. Ah, Kemp's bravado got the better of him, and he broke rank for his own personal glory. He ruined our chance to halt the rebels' advance. You have my sincerest apologies. Damn it, Kempf. I give him a second chance and this is how he repays me? I should have sent him back to Castle Frege, like you said. No, sir, it was me that was too lenient with him. But despite Kemp's failure, I'm not worried. I've stationed my squad of heavily armored knights in front of the castle. Bishop Moore and his team of mages are also present. Next, we ha have Reinhardt and the Galbenritter, already approaching the enemy from behind. And if that wasn't enough, we have the Pegasus Corpse of, the Cel of Celeste on standby, uh, ready to assist us if things go south. With this much strength behind us, we could defeat an ar any army. Indeed, I can find no fault in what you've now outlined. Ah, uh, one other thing I forgot to mention, but Bishop Sias will be gracing us with his presence. He happened to be traveling nearby and graciously offered to lend us his power. The Bishop Sias? The military genius? One and only. His missive said he'd be arriving in a few hours. Ha! Ah, this just isn't the rebel's lucky day, is it? <laughs> In light of this, I'll shore up our defenses for the time being. Once the Lord Tactician arrives, we'll launch our assault immediately. Marcus Gustav, I bid you remain in the castle and await word of our victory. Very well. I'm counting on you, Nikolov. Do you understand the plan, Captain Misha? Yeah, I got it. Very good. And if you'll pardon the intrusion, there's one other matter. That being? I've heard tell your mother was killed by the traitor Sigurd during the Civil War, is that true? I take it that's why you became a mercenary fighting on behalf of the Empire. This isn't about my mother. Back home, we've got lots of starvi starving children. We're doing this for them. All we want is enough coin to buy bread and milk. I see. Ha! Ah, that was a foolish thing to ask. Please forget I said anything. Then I'll be taking my leave. I'll not lie to you, my prince. The enemy's formation is nearly flawless. How so? The main problem is the band of Celestian mercenaries positioned in the northwest. If we advance toward the castle, they'll cut us down from behind. Why not divide our forces and send a team to attack them first? We don't have the men to spare. Half our troops were left behind to defend against Reinhardt and his army striking from the rear. So what should we do? How willing to fight are the Celestian mercenaries? That is the question. <laughs> Yes, the Celestian mercenaries are green units, but they will attack you. Green doesn't mean anything in this game, um, other than that they can be allied to you. That's pretty much all it means, is that they can be. Doesn't mean that they are. Um, Misha here can be recruited, but under two interesting circumstances. And first, first and foremost, you have to put her to sleep. And, well, first and foremost, you have to talk to her with Karen. Then you have to put her to sleep. Then you have to capture and hold on to her for the length of the chapter. It is a very tall task. I am hoping to lure all of these um, knights down southward. 
um, with some of my flyer units, as well as that I'm going to be doing all of that just in tow. We are going to be putting um, Bishop, the Dark Bishop Moore here to sleep immediately. Well, we're going to be silencing him. Same thing, really. All right, so we can move right here and do just that. And we have a lot of targets that we can put uh, to silence. And we're going to start. We don't need to silence anybody else this chapter. Um, and unfortunately, because he's not asleep, he can still move around, walk around, and do whatever he wants. Um, none of the Loptrians up here have restore staves, but if they did, they would very hilariously use them in order to... Um, restore Bishop Moore here. Um, we are going to have a couple of reinforcements that we have to deal with issue-wise, so we kind of have to be careful of that matter as well. Um, we're going to be dancing for Safi here. Now one thing we could do is we could actually warp someone. I don't think we can warp here. Oh, we can. Ooh, we can. I halfway want to do that. Um, reason being is because I don't know if he spawns here. I'm guessing he does. But Bishop Sias comes here. He is totally unkillable in this chapter. For one, you can't reach him with anything other than Siege Tomes um, because he's just too far away. Um, but even if you could reach him, he has Anchor and Miracle Plus, so he's not supposed to be killed in this chapter. We do have some Thoron, Elfire, Bolting, uh, and Meteor bishops here. Um, they're going to be kind of a bit annoying to deal with, but they are stationary, so we can take them on as we see fit when we get close to the chapter. Close to the area, that is. Um, let's see. Bishop Shroff. I kind of want to put Salem. Hmm. Not really Salem. I don't know if I want to put Salem up there. Maybe a unit we don't particularly need, like Finn? Alright. Staff. Warp. I halfway want to do this just because... Sias comes with a sleep staff and a fortify. Um, it's not really all that great dealing with him. Then again, I kind of don't want to waste a warp here. We're going to need every every ounce of warp we have. Huh. I could re-warp Shroff there, but the problem is, is he will be within enemy range. A lot of enemy range, in fact. Yeah, I think it's just for the best that we don't, we don't deal with that. At least not now. Um... So we're going to Hamurn the Sleep Staff. And now we can use that Sleep Staff on Misha. Now, Shroff doesn't have the magic to do that, but we have Salem. Salem is going to use his Ensorcel on him. And we're also going to go ahead and use the Master Seal to promote Salem. We only have a few more promotions we have to deal with the rest of this game. And we do get a few more Master Seals, if I'm not mistaken. Just a couple. Not very many. Um, typically, you have to basically plan around who you want to promote and who you don't want to promote. There are some units that don't need it, like, for instance, Finn. I never promote Finn unless I have extra Master Seals left over. Um, so now we're a Sorcerer with Salem, which is pretty darn cool. He gets a B rank in Staves. Um, he still has D rank in Fire, Thunder, and Wind, and his... Dark Magic didn't change any, so I guess it's only staves that he increases on, which isn't that big a deal. Um, it is useful. It's not necessary. Um, so let's just go ahead and move up as far as we possibly can. We do have a lot of things to take care of here. Um, considering. Including uh, villages to visit with units and um, so on and so forth. Dean and crew are going to be dealing with all of the Flyers as well as the Loptrians. We do have to visit this church to recruit a unit as well. So bear that in mind. 
Alright, Leaf. We're gonna use the Soul Manual. Now Leaf has Soul. Um, he's one of the only units in this game that I consider giving Soul to. Um, there's others, like for instance, um, Fergus wouldn't be a bad candidate. Um, Marita wouldn't be a bad candidate. She doesn't need it. Nobody really needs it. You do get a Luna manual as well, and in my humble opinion, I don't think anybody needs that as well. Um, it's not like it can't be used, it's just not needed. There's a difference. There's a lot of stuff that you gain in this game in which you don't need. The scrolls are not needed, for instance. You don't need to bust anybody's growth rates open in order to have good growths in this game. Most of the characters in this game just grow naturally, and the promotional gains are usually good enough that that they suffice with a lot of the lackluster parts of a unit's toolkit. Like, for instance, we just saw Salem, he just got four defense. Now, is that going to make him invincible? No. But really, the only thing that would make him invincible is if you leveled him up with, like, every possible scroll on him at all times. And even then, he can still be KO'd. Alright, this is very awesome that they're moving. I'm actually super glad for that. Um, we could go about... Hmm. Um, these flyers... We kind of want to be in such a way that only Dean can be reached. Alright, so I kind of want him to be reached by at least a couple of these. So if we put him right here... Um, just making sure. Right here. Um, and let's go ahead and equip the Master Lance for our ranged option. Asbel still needs to get A rank and wind. He's very close to it, so we don't have to worry about that too much longer. But definitely want him to be at A rank. We're going to ensorcel you next turn. Safi doesn't need to move up that far forward. Um, we can move Olwyn up a little bit. Would be nice. Yeah, the beginning part of this chapter is a little bit annoying to deal with because of the fact that we are moving through all these forests. Alright, Owen didn't get much movement out of that, but it's okay. She got a few spaces, that's more than that's more than enough for the time being. The rest of our units are moving pretty slowly through here. You can dismount to make this go by quicker, but honestly. I, I beg to question whether or not dismounting actually would make that big of a difference. Just because when you dismount you lose three movement, and even though you lose less movement while going through forest dismounted, I don't think it's that big of a difference. <laughs> Why did he even attack her? Alright, so Misha's squad did not move. I wonder why that is. 
three of them could have easily attacked uh, Dean. So that's kind of a bit weird. Um, we could go ahead and attack you, get you... Well, yeah, we're doing enough to uh, KO with two hits. Very nice. Very nice indeed. And he got a fantastic level up. That's pretty much all the stats I want out of him right now. Would be nice if he got a bit more defense, um, but it's not needed. Would also be nice if he got some movement. Um, another movement level up would be pretty cool. Um, impressive, even. So let's move outward. Uh, the amazing thing about Marita is that once she gets to the point she's at right now, there's pretty much no defeating her, even if she has something like a slim sword. Um, there's only a handful of enemies and bosses that could even pose a threat to uh, Marita right now. Um, without serious um, defense and, like, skills and abilities themselves. Alright, so... Jormungandr. Yeah, that is a problem with you. Uh, you don't attack twice. Pretty sure his attack speed is zero. And pretty well will be... Oh, his attack speed is one. Impressive. Um, it's gonna be until he has max speed. It's one of the reasons why I was giving him the said scroll. Um, I kind of want to put that back on him, but Shroff needs it too, so... It's a give and take issue. So we could put some of these units in range of, or Asbel in range of some of these units. I actually think that's a great idea. Especially because that'll just uh, make it easier to deal with them on, on uh, the next couple of phases. We're going to probably give over Misha to Finn because we don't need him. Whereas we would absolutely love to use... And this is going to take forever to get through this area. We would absolutely love to be able to use um, Karen, uh, Dean, and Edda this chapter for all they are worth. And we are only doing 5 damage here. But we crit. So, hey, we double crit. Awesome. Very good job, Parn. And we can move you here. And that's pretty much our phase. We just have to hope that Misha's squad starts going after our Asbel and Dean. They might not have gone... I, actually, you know what? I think the reason why they didn't go after Dean was be, because the man has too much defense. An awful amount of defense. Awesome level up there, Parn. Very good. And the rest of them we should be able to deal with easily with Asbel, especially because he's going to be super effective with that Wind Tome. Uh, they stand no chance. Absolutely none. Which is awesome. This chapter is and can be one of the more difficult chapters in the game, especially because of all of the side objectives and so on and so forth. It's best to take it slow and to plan plan out what you're doing as best as you possibly can. Um, we are going to keep moving forward, though. As we need to. And we will heal up Parn. Uh, we can move you here, and what that will allow us to do is also get you over here a bit.
We do have to be careful of these units being able to attack somebody like Shroff. Um, let's go right down here and use Ensorcel. Very nice. And then we're going to talk with Karen. Captain Misha? Hey, last I checked, Celeste wasn't all buddy-buddy with the Empire. Why are you on their side? I have something to protect. Simple as that. And what would that be? None of your damn business. That's what. Off with you now. This battle is just getting started. Yep, very strange battle quote. And now we have to... put Misha to sleep. Perfect. That gives a good old level up for Shroff. And now that she's asleep, um, we actually can just... Hold on a second. Oh, we can't reach with uh, Finn. Unfortunately. Capture. We'll move here. Um, we will definitely take with Finn. So that Etta can do work elsewise. And we're going to take and drop you. And Silver Lance here, we're not capturing. Why is it looking like we're... Oh, it's because we're attacking a green unit. Um, hmm. Only going to do five damage to us if, if she actually hits Dean. She did, but oh well. Can move you here. Yeah, so normally Misha and her squad can be quite terrifying if you don't deal with them right. I'm very glad that they decided to move up towards me, well, down towards me, so that I could take them on in person, one on one, even. Um, now what we have to do, though, is we have to move as fast as we possibly can with Karen um, to get up there to that village particularly, or those villages, before the pirates KO them. Very nice getting magic. And I think... We can just move here. And we can move up to these villages ASAP. Yeah, we don't have to worry about any ballista over here, which is nice. Um... Um, interestingly enough, I actually think that I don't know who uh, we're going to be targeted by with the sleep staff of Sias when he comes here, but it might be Finn just because he's holding on to Misha. Now, he has to keep her this entire chapter. If you drop her, you release her, you might as well restart if you want to keep her, because otherwise you lose out on her just entirely. 
But with that being said, I think we have had enough of this chapter for the time being. We are going to have to continue this next time. I want to thank you for joining me. If you like my content, please upvote and follow, or like and subscribe depending on your platform. And while you're at it, have a great and glorious day gaming.